Let's see if we can get a caller. Maybe uh, that person that called before uh, will call back. Or, uh, uh, I, okay, I think they're going to do it. Okay, let's see. Hello? Uh, hello, are you calling on the broadcast? Okay, uh, the, uh, you might turn down the sound on that other part of the, or on your computer, but uh, let, me, uh, let me introduce you. Hold on just a sec. Uh, what's your name? My name is Raymond. Okay, Raymond. Uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, thanks for your call. Do you have a comment or a question to Jack? Yeah, I would like to ask Jackie about her teaching about the ego and the story hooked together, how the how the story fuels the ego. Did you get that, Jack? Like how the story fuels the ego. Ah, yes. Yes. So, the, the, I suppose the thing is, the, first in terms of the ego is the mind, is thought, is the personal I. That's all the same thing. So that people know what we're talking about. When it is the ego, it's equanimous with the mind. So the mind loves stories. It loves anything that's going on. It wants to like pop out and be in something, be in this dialogue that's happening now, be in uh, you know ideas, imaginings, next week, the past, whatever. It will be in something. The mind wants to be busy. That's fine. But the moment that you connect with the story as if it's real, the ego is getting fat. It's getting fat because the sense of me having a personal life is expanding. Then it's all about me and, whoa, ego is playing. So the thing is, stories can come and go, like a radio station on the background. The story is okay. Believing it, participating in it, that is what creates suffering. Because then the ego believes that it exists, it believes it has something to do, and that it's, you know, that it's mm, the doer, that it's affecting change, that it has some place to go and some place to grow, and it has to fulfill its belief systems around being nice and good and true, and whoa! The package is enormous. So, so whatever the story is, watch a story come and allow the story go. If you participate in it, whatever it is, if you participate in it, participate in it with, with the sense that I am part of this thing, allow it to come and allow it to go. Participating in it fattens the ego and will bring suffering. Totally, totally will bring suffering if you participate in it fully. Whereas if there's a capacity to stand back and watch things at play, if that development of mm, the observing capacity, if that's developed uh, in terms of just practicing it, it's like, okay, just watch this drama rather than being right in this drama and needing to win or needing to express yourself, needing to let it go. You don't need anything. The story tells you all these things. You don't need anything to work out, to go your way. Nothing. Let the story come. Let the story go. Nothing happens. The next story is going to come. What was the last issue that you were involved with? You know, what was the third last one, the fourth last one? We have no idea. But yet at every moment, these things are so important. This is really important that I get this point across. Do you know? It's not. What's the next one going to be? And then I won't remember what this one was when we're there. It's okay. Everything just happens. There's a fluidity that happens. But the ego, you know... The ego is sticky, and when there's a personal eye involved in anything, the ego swells, and that will always bring suffering, always. It's a bit of a long-winded answer, but <laughs> it's it make passionate. Sense? <laughs> 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 well, that's the Irishness again. What to do? <laughs> yes. I, how did that suit you? Did you? Don? Yeah. Ask Jackie what happens when you stop the story. Did you hear that? What happens when you stop no, the story? But of course, you don't stop it. When you mean when the story stops, or yes. Okay. What remains? What remains when the story stops? Yes. Participation must kick in, and then identification with the story has stopped. That's the first step. So when the ability to just see stories pass by, when that is there, 
Where are you? What's going on? What's left? What you always were is sitting there. The peace, the stillness, that sense of, you know, everything is okay and it always was. It isn't a personal perspective. It isn't me having a nice experience. It's just what is. And it's not, um, it's not it's where mind would like to be. Mind will say, oh, this is boring. I much prefer to be out there act actively involved in the story. That actually is mind. That's just another thought. That's just another story. You're already in the story then. So as, as observation capacity develops and there's a distance from story, one will find that the stillness and the completeness and the fulfillment that rests there underneath the crazy mind that jumps out is exquisitely perfect, fulfilling, and total. It's, it's, it's just the absolute. It's what you are. It's God. It's, it's everything. It's nothing. Every word falls short. But it's the truth. But one has to kind of, I suppose, practice it or, or find that space in everyday life. You know, we access it through yoga. We access it through meditation, perhaps. We kind of fall through the, the crazy mind grabbing your attention. And what the vastness of what is resting underneath is so perfect and complete. Stay there. Stay there. Life is a breeze then. No matter what happens, it's not happening to you. Because the person...